I'm Randy Bueller here with Brian David Marshall. Welcome back to the Tournament Center. Five rounds are now in the books here at Pro Tour Yokohama. Round six has gotten started. It feels like the tournament's starting to take shape. Yeah, we're starting to really get a sense of the decks that people are playing and what decks are doing well. Uh, we, we looked over the top tables. Yeah, there's now there's ten players that are undefeated at this point. Ten people are five and zero. Oh. That means ten people through to day two. Right. right. That's the cut. You got to go five and three. So we got ten guys who picked up the five wins they need. Everybody else is still trying to hit that number. Everyone else is still on the bubble. Sure. Now, these 10 guys, it's pretty interesting. I, I, walking down those top tables, looking at what those guys were playing, not a planes in sight. Right. It seemed like no white weenie decks at all. It seemed like every table had a green red deck. Yep. It seemed like every table had some sort of blue deck. They were, they were blue black. And there was, a, you know, a yeah, there was heavy, one mono blue. It was, it was almost it was a almost, fish deck. Not, maybe it may, might have had black, but it was heavy blue, and it was definitely a fish deck. It I was, saw deserts. I'm pretty sure that was mono blue. Yeah, if they've got desert, it's almost certainly that's mono this, blue. That's when, you, that's when you know. And uh, it has, uh, it uses Void Mage Prodigy. Uh, I've seen versions. It was one of the better decks pre-Planar Chaos in, in Block Constructed. Okay. And it was Sage of Epitier, Void Mage Prodigy. Oh wow. Uh, Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Nice. And, you know, a suite of wizards, and you just beat down with these little, you know, some terrible creatures and just counter stuff as needed with those terrible creatures. So, uh, Maro Terengi's the guy running the mono blue deck. Pretty yeah. interesting. You've also got uh, three blue black sort of controlish decks, kind of what everybody was expecting. Uh, those decks are run by Brandon Burks, Olivia Ruel, Dane Young. Is it Dane Young or Dane? No, not Dane Young. Sorry. You're right. I feel like red's got to be the story, though. There's just red everywhere. Whether it's mono red, full of burn, whether it's green red with a bigger creature base, Stormbind, that seems like the key. Stormbind, we also saw like an, almost like an angry hermit looking deck. Monvoli Acid Moss, Monvoli and Land Asmus, Destruction. Avalanche Riders, Boom Bust. Yeah. You know, just Mana Acceleration and, uh, and Land Destruction, which seemed really good. And a lot, of the, a lot of the green red decks also seem to be running blue for Aeon Chronicler and Vesuvian Shapeshifter. Sure. So you get automatically untapping spectral forces with your shapeshifter because you, you, know, you oh, flip nice. it down and you untap it and attack. So by my count, three red decks, pretty much mono red, burn, you know, weenies, red deck wins, if you will. Three green red decks. Right. Three of the blue-black control decks, sort of damnation based. Right. And then the one mono blue. There's your top ten. I mean, four colors, three or four different strategies, no white weenies. You have to go down to table seven or eight to find planes. Yep. Yeah, they're good. Uh, table table seven boss. and table eight were people. Well, both X and one, you know, still solid, sure, sure. but not what you were expecting if you were watching Magic Online coming <laughs> to this event. Now, the most exciting match on the top tables, by the way, this this is a match. Antonino De Rosa, Olivier Ruel. They're both sitting at five and zero. Oh. Ali had to beat his brother to get to five and zero. Oh. Took down Antoine Ruel in a feature match a couple of rounds ago. Antonino, meanwhile, he and Ben Rubin have put together just an awesome red build. It's like they started off with this sort of nice red, and then Ben Rubin tricked it out. And all of a sudden, they've got, like, the cobalt land so they can sack things to bring greater Gargadon out earlier. Just all kinds of crazy technology. Here's an example of that crazy technology. Now, the deck that Olivia's playing is like kind of like a four-color control deck. Right. And he, uses, he fixes his mana with Urborg. Right. Antonino sided in Vesuvius. <laughs> as a strip, as a strip mine for the legendary land. Oh, that's awesome! And so it's like, oh, suddenly this tendrils of corruption, <laughs> which I can. You, I mean, that's that's one. That's of the, the big, combo of the tournament, that's, by that's the, the way. That's the combo of the tournament. Make no mistake, biggest Ur combo of the tournament: Urborg tendrils of corruption. Tendrils of corruption. And now this tendrils, which the mono red deck, just if you resolve like a tendrils for seven, yeah, you win. You just you, you just can't lose to the red deck. Right. Well, now suddenly those tendrils just are not nearly as scary with dreadship reefs and other cards, you know, fixing that right. are so busy fixing your other colors of mana that That's they, right. they don't count as swamps. That's Ben Rubin technology. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like a BR deck. It's kind of red, kind of beat well, down. Does not look like a Ben Rubin deck, but it's full of Ben Rubin well, technology. Ben, ben, ben Rubin was sitting one table over, and I watched Ben get in with Sequata Lancer. Like we've <laughs> talked a lot about the time shift to cheat. Wow. Sequata Lancer on turn three, attacking side by side with Blood Knight. Nice. <laughs> That's red deck wins. That, fair enough. Ben Rubin 4-1, very, in very good shape in this tournament. So uh, that's an interesting match. The other guy that I noticed at the 5-1 tables, Pro Tour Geneva champion Mike Ron. Mike Ron, yeah, he's, uh, he's one point behind Kenji in the Player of the Year race, yep. has won the first Pro Tour of the Year, and he shows up 5-0. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fighting with uh, Brandon Burks right now. We don't know how that's played out yet, but yeah, he's 5-0. He's playing uh, Stormbind deck. He's got, yep. got, you know, not a lot of... Uh, not a ton of experience deck. He made the call on sort of on site. Yeah, he did a bunch of play testing. He did a bunch of play audibled testing. into this yeah. deck, close, pretty close to the last. So minute. and his deck, his deck looks you know terrific. It doesn't 
not, you know, not very, it doesn't seem especially tricked out. It seems pretty basic, solid, yep. you know, and he's just playing really well. Got some pretty good, uh, pretty good names at 4-1, too. They're playing in the feature match area this round in round six. Mark Herberholtz has already picked up a win, so he's up to 5-1. and one. And then you've got uh, Katsuhiro Mori and Masashi Oiso both sitting on 4-1. So some great names. The, the battle, though, the best match of the tournament has got to be the match that happened in round five between Kenji Samura and Shota Yasaoka. The last two players of the year, you did an article on Kenji Samura last week talking about how good he was. You know, is he one of the best of all time? Is he cracked the top five? And, and I forget who it was, but one of the respondents, I interviewed like a lot of top players about right. it. One of the players was like, I mean, Kenji's great, but I think Shota Yasaoka might be better. And one of Mike Flores' contentions about Kenji, that, of why Kenji was better, uh -huh. is just Kenji's ability to make people play his game and to, to, sure. to really outfox his opponent, basically. Right. And then you said... Yeah, well, I saw this matchup coming. I pulled up a chair. I pulled up right behind Kenji. I, I pulled up a chair watching, and God, is he good. He's just, it's crazy. He's playing this match against Yasoka. Game one, it's, it's, it's a control mirror. They're both blue-black to fairy, sort of mystical teachings, decks. Shota gets out to fairy, resolves to fairy. I mean, first you've got, Shota goes for to fairy. So Kenji, Kenji has, uh, he has the ability to kill it. He has the ability to counter it. What does he respond with? He responds with a Teferi of his own. So now the way the stack works, if his Teferi resolves, then he can, he can counter the, the Yasaoka's Teferi completely unmolested because his Teferi is resolved. Like, he sat on that Teferi for like 10 turns waiting to set that up. It was awesome. Wounds up, they wound up, they both, they, they wound up both resolving because a bunch of counters happened as a response. But like, Kenji set that stack up where he got to buy back a spell burst and he's just up the spell burst. So he's like, his Teferi dealt with the Teferi. I was just fun. So, I mean, control mirrors. Extremely skill testing. I just watch Kenji. He's playing Yasaoka. Yasaoka won Player of the Year last year. Yasaoka, people are saying, might be the best player in the game. No, and, and he's, he's, he's not. He's, Sorry. He's, he, and he's playing a deck that's has been his trademark block in, block out. He's Mr. Control. Blue, blue in black Japan. control. Yasuo control decks. They, these are. Yasuo this control. Is, yep, this yep. is his specialty. And it's kind of interesting because not only is this a matchup between Kenji and Yasuoka, but it's a matchup between Katsuhiro Mori yep. and, Ken and, and uh, Yasuoka. As deck builders. Because Kenji's playing a, a Katsuhiro Mori deck. Yeah, the deck's. Mori, Mori and Shadow Yasuoka are sort of definitely rivals for the, the best control deck builder. Yeah, same basic archetype, but some tweaks. So Yasuoka resolves a, a Teferi later on in the game. Also resolves a Dralnu. He's sitting with Dralnu and Teferi in play for 10 turns. So he, so he wins this game? No, Kenji wins. It's Kenji. Samura we're talking about. Kenji decked him. Wow. He basically figured out, he, you know, he had, uh, he had Urza's factory going, so he's sort of preventing him from attacking, and, you know, Drawl News he keeps killing off tokens, and eventually Kenji just manages to accumulate a hand where he baits with, uh, he baits with a morph. It's obviously the shapeshifter, so it's going to take out the fairy. Yasaoka chooses a fight over that, which then means Kenji's damnation. Oh, Yasaoka can counter that. The second damnation, Kenji built up the hand where he's like, bait, counter this, and then the damnation resolved. Yasaoka's looks, it's funny, because they had about 10 cards left in Yasaoka's library at this point. They've both got multiple Urza's factories, but it's like two apiece and they can both power them. So Yasaoka sacks Terramorphic Expanse. And you're like, he sacks the Expanse, picks up his deck, it's like, nope, I'm out. Scoops them up. Not a damage source left in his deck, and Kenji decked him. Just unbelievable That's match. Phenomenal. Urza's factory is a card that I've been really surprised. Uh, it's good. How, just really prevalent in, in the control decks. Mm -hmm. Really been a deciding factor. I've seen multiple cases of players being able to activate two Urza's factories a turn. Yep, like I said, the end of this game, essentially, the decking was two versus two, and they just smashed into They're each just, other. Just running into the red right. zone and disintegrating. And so Kenji is 3-1-1 one, one with that win. Yasaoka falls to 2-2-1. Uh, two, two He's going to have to rattle off a couple of wins if he wants to play right. on day two. He, ha he has to Kenji's win Kenji's still, you know, X-1-1, one one, still in a decent shot. Fine position for this tournament. It's going to be a fun one. Absolutely. We got uh, five rounds in the books, three more to go. Everybody's trying to get to five and three. You got ten undefeateds jockeying for pole position going into tomorrow. That's the story as of the middle of round six. For Brian David Marshall, I'm Randy Bueller. We will see you with more Tournament Center coverage later today. If you're 18 or under, you can play Magic for cards and college in the Magic Scholarship Series. Start putting your skills to the test at an MSS Qualifier Challenge, where you'll get an alternate art foil whirling dervish card just for showing up. Kick enough butt and you'll get a piece of $1,000 in scholarship, free Magic cards for a year, and an invitation to play in the championship, where you'll play for a piece of $100,000 in college scholarship money. 
Season 2 picks up on March 24th, and the championship in Baltimore is on July 28th. So get your deck in order and get ready to school your opponents. For more information about the scholarship series, go to wizards.com forward slash MSS.